So if there's anything good to come out of this book, that is this. Do not idolize people. You don't know them as well as you think you do. Today, we are going to be talking about a book. This book is a whole mess. <laughs> oh, uh, I don't I don't even know where to start. I was so angry for, I'm going to say like 85, maybe 90% of the book. This is written in third person, but it follows a specific character. His name is Gnome. Gnome Alvero. He's 16 years old. He's bisexual. He is half Jewish and Latinx, and he is Carolinian. But his parents were immigrants from Atlantia, which is another nation. They're undocumented immigrants. When the story opens, he is just living with his father. His mother unfortunately killed herself a few years prior. We don't know why she killed herself, just that she did. And his father is very militant, very anti-government, very much for um, the refugees coming from Atlantia into Carolinia. But after his mom died, Gnome's father just kind of becomes catatonic, essentially. He can't work, he gets really sick, and so Gnome ends up dropping out of school, he takes on becoming an adult. He essentially grows up a little bit too early. The story starts essentially with no one coming home from working at the migrant center and finding his dad in the same state that he normally is in. His dad won't talk to him, he's really upset, and you start to feel for him, you know? You're like, oh, this poor kid, you know, he doesn't really have an adult figure in his life. And then his dad starts bleeding from his eyes and no one realizes, holy crap, the virus has gotten to him. He runs down the hall to try to find some other woman that he knows she's dead in her apartment. And then he gets really dizzy, lightheaded, he falls, he realizes he's becoming sick with the virus as well. He then later wakes up in a morgue in a hospital and um, they threw him in there because they thought he was dead. There's a man named Calix Lair. He used to be the king of Carolinia. Basically, he overthrew or he saved Carolinia, formed this the nation, but also became king. I don't know how he became king and it didn't turn into a monarchy whatever I guess it's kind of like England framed after that way essentially where there's a monarch but there's still a government behind it like the parliament whatever anyway so he becomes king of Carolinia and then he decides to step down from being king and there's a chancellor working in this position but Lair is still also in power it's just a whole thing so Lair propositions um, no. And he's like, I would really like you to join level four. Now, it's mentioned repeatedly throughout the book that there is this part of the government of witchings called level four. None of the other levels are ever mentioned. No one knows why there is a level four. Gnome is immediately placed in level four, even though he doesn't necessarily qualify. So witchings can only use their magic based on knowledge of scientific or mathematic universal properties. I don't know if I'm saying that right. So basically, to be able to do telekinesis, you have to have some kind of knowledge of physics. To be able to heal somebody, you need to know something about the human biology, physiology, whatever. To be able to be a technopath, which is what Gnome is, you have to be good at technology. Like he is a cyber hacker, he's a hacker, and he actually went to juvie at one point in time for hacking into a national security, not the national security center, but some kind of network he hacked into. They got him, they sent him to church, juvie, and he hacked into it on behalf of the refugees from Atlantia and Carolina. Uh, again, he was young, Nobody had asked him to do it, but nobody had stopped him either. So again, you feel a little bit sorry for the kid, but he is just an awful character. He does not care this story. He's got serious anger and aggression issues. 
Um, there is a part in the book where somebody is like, oh, you consider yourself a refugee even though you were born in Catalonia. You know, his anger is justified. Like, he doesn't have to be an actual refugee to care about refugee issues. But sometimes he, like, takes it to the extreme. He's very impatient. And this is a problem for me because I recently just got finished watching Eat Tail in Class, which is this show on Netflix. It follows this character, Park Sarawi, and he is extremely patient. He comes up with essentially a 15-year plan from when he gets out of prison. It's not foolproof. A lot of what happens and is able to happen is because of the people he comes across and him seeing their value not just as people, but also to him, <laughs> to his goals. And he makes it known to them. He's never like using people without their knowledge. But anyways, the point is he has a plan. Noam doesn't have a plan. He's impatient, he is angry, and he just thinks he's right all the time and that everyone else is not doing anything to help the cause. He makes stupid decisions all the time. At one point in time, he breaks into the government building like a section of the government building that he's not supposed to be into or he doesn't necessarily break in but he walks in and people aren't really paying attention to him and he's using his techno pathy to read people's messages and do stuff to um the technology in the area and essentially he's trying to get chancellor sasha's office so he can get on his computer dig up evidence so that he can show the people how awful Ch chancellor sasha is and help Calix lawyer get back into power so that he can then help the refugees and so on and so forth. Well, he doesn't have a plan for this. He doesn't have a blueprint. He just does it on a whim on the first time. He's like, oh my god, I'm actually getting away with this. And then, <laughs> and then he can't get Chancellor Sasha's office. So he goes to the next best thing, which is some other guy. Anyways, so he breaks into his computer, finds some emails, recent emails that Chancellor Sasha has sent to him about how awful the immigrants are and so on and so forth. And he puts it on a flop cell, which I think is supposed to be a floppy disk. <laughs> and it's like, we're hundreds of years in the future and now we're back to floppy disks? What? Anyways, so he's leaving with all this information and suddenly the alarms go off and he's like, oh my God, I am caught, what do I do? And then somehow he accidentally cuts off the power. He does this so much. He does not have control over his power. Whenever he is panicked, he uses his power, he uses it too much to the point where he messes things up. Like after this incident, you would think he would like <clears throat> work on using his power under stress so that he doesn't overdo it or anything like that. No, he just continues to think he's high and mighty and think that everyone's looking down on him and trying to prove better and he's just doesn't really think things through until after the fact. People are constantly telling him, you don't know the whole story about everything. You don't know this person as well as you think you do, and so on and so forth. And he just disregards what they say. He's so infuriating and I did not like him. And I don't know if this is a standalone book. I get the impression from the ending that there's probably a second book but I will not read it, especially if he's the main character, because I just didn't like him, even though the ending is kind of interesting and we're like, okay, what's going to happen to him now? How much more is he possibly going to get manipulated or is he going to figure out how to not get manipulated? I don't know. It's implied that Calix Lair and Gnome are very similar in thoughts and beliefs and ways of handling things. Um, they are both, for a man, Calix Lair is apparently over 120 years old. Um, but somehow along in this book, he seems very impatient. <clears throat> he doesn't appear that way to Gnome, but you get the feeling that he's rushing through things for someone who is 120 years old. He should know that he could take his time. There's not a character in the book that I particularly enjoyed. Lair was interesting in that you weren't necessarily sure right off the bat whether or not he was a villain. Um, but you get the idea that there's something off about him. Gnome, for whatever reason, it's like, 
hello, red flag, red flag, red flag, red flag. And he's just like, but he's a liar. And it's like, no, stop idolizing him. This is a huge warning to people to not idolize people because you don't know people as well as you do. Some people don't even know their spouses as well as they think they do or their children. So like, why would you idolize a stranger and <clears throat> someone you've read about in history books and again, it's also mentioned in the book that history is written by the victors, rewritten by the victors, which is a nice note because it's true. So like what you read about him might not be true. Speaking of writing, let's talk about the writing in this book. So in the book, there are instances, it's just, it, they're not chapters. They're just inserts after a chapter and before a new chapter. It's just exposition dropped into the story essentially and it's a couple of times where there's like movie this is like a movie the documentary right and it's written in screenwriting format and i thought it was really cool um but also kind of weird because there is a person talking right in the documentary but it's written into the screenwriting section as if like like maybe somebody wrote up the screenplay after the documentary was filmed or, I don't know, somebody that couldn't watch it or couldn't hear it, you know what I mean? But it just, it didn't work for me. And then I'm pretty sure there are other, you see there's just here some letters. There are other films that are found, um, but they're not written like films, they're written like plays, which is a completely different format. But the point I'm making here is, those of you that are new might not know that I like to play video games. One of the video games my husband and I currently play on and off because we've both been busy. We've been playing Borderlands 3. In Borderlands 3, like with a lot of, a lot of other RPGs or even first person shooter games, like I know this is definitely a thing in like Bioshock Infinite, it's in a lot of video games where you can find these tapes or letters written by people that might not currently be in the game but are related to the plot and you don't find out information about these these people until you find these tapes or letters written by them and then the more you have the more knowledge you have about what happened in the past um what's going on related to the plot right so those moments are earned the character finds it they get to hear the audio or they get to read the letter and it's read also to the person playing and now that moment is earned. These instances where they are being dropped in the middle between chapters, they're not earned. It's not like it's knowledge or known. He's not learning anything. This is simply for the reader, which I don't like. I don't think it works. I feel like this, the way it is presented to us. It should be known finding these things. And I think that honestly would have been really cool. That is something I would have rewritten with this book. What I will say is that this is definitely a YA novel for older teens. I'm thinking 16 and up. There is a lot of uh, cursing in this book, which I don't particularly care about. Like, frankly in love, Frank curses all the time. Well, not all the time. He probably doesn't curse nearly as much as Gnome does, but there is cursing, there is talk of um, sexual stuff, things teenagers normally do, adults do, whatever. But this book goes way beyond that. There are sex scenes in here, or a sex scene. There's like pornographic images or things that happen in here. There is mention of statutory rape, underage drinking, underage drug abuse. It just hits the mark on everything. Um, and not in a good way. I don't think. And that's another thing about Gnome, for example. He's not a good friend. He's not a good romantic partner at all, I don't think. Um, it's always all about him. He tries to force information out of people when they're not ready to give him information. And even though he backs off, somehow it just gives off the manipulative vibe. He doesn't ask the right people for the right things, you know? I just, I don't like the kid. There is a romance in this book, if you would call it that. I 
don't like romances where miscommunication is like the central point. It's like you guys aren't meant to be together if you can't figure out how to talk to each other. <laughs> Sorry. But um, no, it's in, uh, a little bit involved with the, with Calix's adopted son, Dara. Shirazi. There is some messed up romance between those two kids. They start off as enemies and no one just says some things to him that I'm just like, why would you say that? Are you like, what? Are you trying to flirt? Are you trying to be cool? Like, and then, you know, with Dara too, he, he's not the nicest person, but you eventually realize like why he was so guarded against the gnome. And like, to me, like, if somebody makes it known that they don't like you, like, fine. I will leave you alone. I'm not going to wait for you to come home at night and ask you where you've been and then make a comment about the fact that you might be sleeping around with people. Like, what? What's wrong with you? <laughs> Mind your own business. Focus on yourself. Like, Dara mentions to Gnome, again, who is a fan of Lair, multiple times that he's not as great of a father as Gnome seems to think he is. And there is one moment where Noam gets to see this in person and it still doesn't register as to why Dara would hate Lair. And it's the fact that during one of their training sessions or study sessions, um, Lair makes Dara try to resurrect a dead bird. And Dara's like, you know, I cannot do this. Why are you making me do this? And he's visibly upset. And then Lair does it. The bird is alive, but not. It's screeching. It's banging itself into a cage. It's bleeding all over. And it's just a horrific scene. And it's like, what? So if he made him do that in front of Gnome, and he did that to Dara in front of Gnome, like, why wouldn't you think that, like, oh, maybe there's more stuff that goes on behind the scenes that I don't know about? But Gnome is just so focused on the fact that Lair could help the refugees and that he doesn't put things into perspective that, like, maybe Lair has bad intentions. He, he's just, he's a politician. I don't... Uh, I guess one other thing I just want to touch on before I end this awful review is I have a hard time with books that start off with a parent death or something and we don't have any like knowledge there's no relationship we haven't seen a relationship between gnome and his father like when we see gnome's father he is in this catatonic like state he doesn't care about eating he doesn't seem to care about gnome he's just you know He's out of it. And we know he's been out of it since his mom died. So he's sad and he's depressed and that's fine. But besides that, we've never gotten much of, we, there was no before of what their relationship looked like. So when he dies and he dies of the virus, you think, oh, well, he was just kind of in that state because of the virus at that time. But like, for example, Etail in class, you know, Park Sarui and his dad, you see their bond over this mishap with the chairman and his son. And so when his dad dies, oh my God, does it kill you? And his reaction to his dad died kills you because you know they had a good relationship. He was a good father. Park Sui is the way he is because of his father. And that plays throughout the entire novel. Throughout the entire novel. That is not a thing with this book. This book is just a cacophony of messed up parents and messed up children because of their parents and because of the situation and it's honestly sad just because of that but don't feel anything for any of these characters there are side characters that might as well not even be in the story <laughs> most of the time because gnome either doesn't listen to them or doesn't interact with them enough he never asks anyone else for help it is him against the world it's i'm sorry it's him and lair against the world sometimes dara too when he's feeling extra emotional or horny who knows i just ugh, throw the whole book away I, what would i give this book i would say a solid 2.5 <laughs> mostly because the premise is very 
interesting. Um, I think you're supposed to suspend your disbelief on some things, which is fine. I can do that. I did like the idea that it was tied to worldly knowledge of different things like physics, mathematics. So yeah. Anyways, overall, I think the premise of the book and the things that it tackles, it is a great idea, not well executed. I also really liked that the male main character is bisexual. That's something, I mean, maybe it's more prevalent now in way, but I still feel like men being bisexual is not like, like people still think that's not possible, but it is. And so I really appreciated having a bisexual um, male character um, as the protagonist, but he was just an awful character and I did not like the romance in it. It felt more fueled by lust than anything because, you know, the times when they really tried to talk, they would always end up arguing or they were drinking to talk and it just, it wasn't a healthy relationship. It wasn't healthy. And this is a whole book. It's just not healthy. I feel so bad saying this. I don't know if this is her first novel. I know I have been struggling writing novels for years now. Um, just because I, you know, I think I've got it and then I'm like, wow, this is awful. <laughs> and I hope one day that I write a novel that's up to my own standards, but it's not happening anytime soon. So I don't want to rag on her because like kudos to her for writing a novel. Um, if you do it in the Reading Fever King, let me know if you have different opinions on the book down below. Um, also, let me know what you guys are reading, if you have any recommendations. Until next time, happy reading. Bye!